Welcome to the Blow Mold Hospital. I'm going to be talking a little bit about painting today. First I wanted to show you, if you've watched my previous videos that came out just before this one, I was doing some patching on a blow mold here, the Santa Claus. But not this Santa Claus, because this was my one that's in really good shape, has a few glue spots on it and things, but this is what it's supposed to look like. Boots nice and black, coat nice and red. But what I did with the other one, I had a couple of cracks and holes in it that I went ahead and repaired. And I got into an interesting situation. My interesting situation is, while he's supposed to look like this, I clean all my blow molds with alcohol when I'm trying to clean them or do any kind of repair on them. Whatever paint is on this guy, alcohol removes it. So even down here. So if you saw the other video, what I was trying to do is repair a couple of holes here and up here. And I wasn't worried about the paint loss because I was going to add the paint back. Um, and this was all faded here, but alcohol, I applied it to the boot here and I noticed it started smearing. I'm like, it's not cleaning up at all. So I just rubbed it a little bit further and it absolutely is removing the paint from this all the way around. So that's interesting. I've never had that happen before, but whatever formula they've used for this, alcohol removes it. So right now what I'm going through is I'm trying to get this thing ready. And again, I thought I was just going to cover it with alcohol and get it ready for painting, but nope. So these little scuff marks here, I've been going over here and along through here, any of these marks. I've been using my 2000 crit, um, grit sandpaper and just gently buffing over them and uh, to remove these marks. So rather than just start off painting, I gotta remove some more paint from this one. And then I might go through and uh, remove some more of the red. But first of all, I'm gonna go through, <coughs> excuse me, and remove all of these marks. So I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding here. You all don't need me to sit here and do that while I'm uh, recording. So I'll get this cleaned up and then we'll be back to talk about painting. A little bit more work than I thought. All right, remember when I said that the alcohol was pulling the paint off of this thing? I wasn't joking. It literally melted the paint right off of it down to the plastic. I left the backside because the paint was pretty good there. As you can see, my repairs that I had talked about in another video still there, but the paint literally just melted right off. So I just went ahead and took it all off. It allowed me to get the sandpaper in here and pull off some of those marks that um, were on here from the previous video. So it's down to where we are with the um, bare old yellowed plastic. So, all right, so let's talk about painting. Painting. So, what I'm about to say, don't uh, turn off the video just yet when you hear this, but when I'm looking to paint red and black specifically on indoor small blow molds, I use Sharpies. I do not mean these kind, these simple small ones with just the small felt tip on it. I use... Sharpie king size. These are actually industrial markers. These things are designed to paint or to mark on oil, uh, through oil, through grease, through water, not necessarily underwater, but if it's a little damp, you can still write with it. They're a different characteristic and blend than these traditional markers that you see from Sharpie. So, before you turn off the channel and say this isn't possible, I just want to say that I have restored a couple of blow molds, one in particular, um, and it's one of my favorite ones, and I will show it to you after I'm done here. But literally, you take a marker and start painting with it. So one thing that I do want to tell you is the black in this, the characteristic of this is you can do straight lines and it's just fine. It covers, you don't see the streaks, you don't see any kind of markings on it, and it actually will end up painting very much like this over here, like the original. Now the difference with the red, the red builds up. So every time you go back and forth, 
you'll see straight lines. And I did a little bit here on the hat and you can see that there's some straight lines there. So it doesn't look quite as nice as you would want it to. So I will eventually fix that up here. But the process that I use is a very small circular motion. Now you could go through and tape out all of these areas, the gloves, the belts, the beard, and spray paint it with some red acrylic spray paint gloss and you know it would take you a long time to do it the thing with regular paint is it does prevent if you put it on too thick it prevents the lights from showing through and to be honest when you have one that's got such paint damage and such damage from you know being dropped or from being broken or in this case this one being burnt you're trying to restore it back to the best it can be it's not going to be like the original you're just not going to be able to get it back there the painting techniques they used all of that is not going to be the same so I will say this I'm going to start painting I'll do the boots first and rather than show you me doing this over time I'll do them and then I'll come back in just a minute and I'll show you how it looks see what you think One cool thing to note about these is that they have the extra large tube for holding lots of ink. So they do a really great job. So really quick check in. Why don't you look at those boots. If you recall, this one was still painted and it gummed up a little bit as I painted over it. I was a little worried about that. Um, the paint as it dissolved with alcohol it also dissolved a little bit with this these markers so I just kind of touched up as best I could but if you remember there was a damaged spot here and there was a burn spot there that I fixed with epoxy it's not perfect it's not as good as I'd like it to be but look at that boot it's actually pretty well but now this one the ink came completely off of the front or the paint did and look at that what the marker did for black when there's nothing but plastic there without the paint on it I want you to look at how good that turned out it looks brand new shiny looks wonderful so as you see I'm starting to do the red and as I mentioned before I'm doing tiny little circles Yes, it's a little time consuming, but you'll get a better outcome because if you look at it, it's not perfect, but what you do see is kind of like material. and It almost looks like it's a fuzzy material because the color variation in there, it looks more, in my opinion, I, you call me crazy, but in my opinion, it looks a little bit more like cloth because of the variation in the red black you don't see that because it just covers over itself very easily and it's it's dark but this red has a little bit of texture I would say to it even though it's smooth you can see the visual texture in there of where you're circling over things like that if you do straight lines again it just does not look right so I'm just gonna keep painting on this and I'll show you 
more in just a bit. All right, I finished it. One on the left is the one that's um, that wasn't damaged, didn't have any sun damage. That's original. You can see that uh, the way the paint is. Now the one on the right is the one that I just finished. And if you remember, this boot was white because the paint came off of it. This one I left the paint on, but that's where the damage had um, that I repaired. So a little bit messy there because I didn't take the paint off. I will coat that again, but overall not too bad. But on the side that the paint did come off, looks like brand new. So that looks great. And then the red. It's not exactly as original and when you get a little close you can see what I talked about earlier saying it looks like it has a little bit of texture to it you can see the kinda looks like cloth to me I don't know maybe I'm just being hopeful there but by doing tiny little circles and swirls and making the pattern very random it looks more like cloth and again I don't think you can ever get it back to exactly normal even with spray paints just because the amount of effort that goes in the spray paint but I've got to tell you I'm very happy with that so this guy originally had two holes in his left leg and all of his paint came off and it was severely faded they look pretty good tell me what you think I like the magic marker. Anyway, I was going to show you the other one that I had told you about that I had uh, done this previous before, so I'll uh, set that up just a moment. The two that I've done with Sharpie markers. This guy here, he's an Empire. I believe the date is 1960... 69. Well, one of the things about him you saw this one over here and he, how, how sun faded he was. This guy was almost the color of his beard over his entire body, except for the gold on the bell, the copper on the bell. It didn't really fade, but everything else, the paint was basically gone. He was almost white, pink a little bit from some of the, the red being there still. But I took the time and I went through and used the markers on him and he turned out really great. I was super happy with how he turned out. It's a little you can buy these in a box of 12. Um, I think when I bought the black ones they were a dozen for, I think they were on special on Amazon for like 10 bucks. These I got recently because I wanted to do more red. I've got a couple of other blow molds that I want to do uh, color up as well. But um, I think I paid 14 So, I mean, a little over a dollar each, dollar 20 cents each or so. And when I got the black ones, they were less than a dollar each. And again, these are big with lots of ink and... They do the job. I hope you all agree, but let me know what you think, if it was worth doing or not, but I'm really pleased. Anyway, thanks for joining me on a Blow Mold Hospital. Sorry for the length again, but I want to make sure that I cover everything and all the steps. Thanks again.